Good evening, this is Kuro. Got a tier 9 game in my Fletcher. Going over the matchmaking. Have a Neptune. I believe this one is Radar Neptune. Oop, I'm jumping the gun. Uh, got an Atlanta rounding out the radar threats. I do have a, a Flint, so they do have some firepower that can get close to a cap. Uh, looking at the destroyer threat, Fletcher. Uh, is the only thing that I'm really worried about. Uh, so let's go on ahead and kick this thing off. <clears throat> so my game plan is I am the centermost destroyer. And I'm basically going to play Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at B-Cap. Um, honestly, just pretty much pick this at, at random. I know I've got a Buffalo here. Um, so I'm kind of liking that I've got Radar on, on this flank. So that's basically my deciding factor between B or C. Um... Now, I'm going to play it probably a little different than how you see a lot of random destroyer players play it, where they they push right into this island and uh, try to, to hug the island. The issue with that, um, you can't spot anything behind that island. And, I mean, we've got a little bit of an issue here where somehow our buffalo is ahead of our destroyer that's supposed to be scouting for the team. At least the moss is headed in the right direction. Basically, this uh, corner here is kind of a linchpin on either either end of the map. And uh, apparently, somebody didn't like that I asked for them to to support me, but whatever. Just letting people know where uh, my RPF is. And again, not really looking to go to the island. And this is this is why. Because if you look at, at this situation, this Akatsuki has a perfect torp arc here. And this is this is something you've seen me do do this repeatedly. Um uh, I don't know if I've had multiple videos of it on on uh, online or not, but especially from the north spawn, coming right up here and flooding this area right here with torpedoes right off the bat is yield some very surprising hit results. Uh, it seems like you almost always catch a DD in here, and uh, so. Me having this this extra standoff from the island and and just being ready to to kite. I see the the mayhan coming in. I'm just using my my detection against him. Let my team try to get a couple extra shots at him. Unfortunately, they miss. So I just throw a couple random shots out there, and this mayhan ends up smoking up. So that's basically one less smoke he's going to have over the course of the game. Now, me taking that passive approach, you can see where it starts to pay dividends here. Because you're going to start to see torpedoes coming in from this direction. Followed by mayhem torps from this direction. And if I had been, you know, much closer in there, I'd have been caught in a pretty nasty cross torp. But because I was, I was pulled back when I saw the two DDs, um... I was able basically to escape that little uh, that little cross torp. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my first set of torpedoes out there. Most likely these aren't going to hit the Mayhan. Uh, I saw him pop out briefly. I'm I'm expecting him to uh, already be up here, angled out, and and ready to run as soon as he caps it. He's really not going to want to pick a fight with me. Mayhan versus Fletcher is incredibly one-sided. Um, <clears throat> but 
what I'm doing right now is it's looking like we're going to get C-Cap. Uh, we already do have a kill advantage, so we do have points. So um, I'm not terribly worried about getting right back on B-Cap. What I am looking at is getting up here to uh, try to harass this group coming down here. We've got four battleships along with an Atlanta and a Neptune all coming down here that they just lost their destroyer escort. So I'm, I'm thinking that I can do a lot of good uh, coming up here and, uh, you know, picking a fight basically. Call and target on uh, cruisers that I see them. Just to uh, re emphasize to my battleships hey, there's a juicy target. What I'm looking for, or what I was looking for, was this Gneisenau. now. I know this guy's eventually going to be making this, this move here. So I just want to chill out and, uh, and uh, wait here for that. I spot the flint and. Uh, this is one of those moments that uh, the meta shift, I think this guy may be running a, a different build than, you know, pre, prior to uh, um, 8.0, I believe this Flint might be running defensive fire and not hydro. Uh, and it's little things like that, that that reduce pressure on destroyers because I'm going to dev strike this, uh, this Flint. Uh, and it's, you know, caught smoked up and, uh, you know, it is what it is, but I did lose, uh, my moss out here on, on the flank. So what I'm going to want to do is basically move to kind of his picket area and, uh, resume kind of that that same spotting role um, where I I go and uh, try to spot what's around this corner from my team and anything that that pushes up to this corner try to to torp it or harass it with my guns Now you'll notice when I when I'm taking this position, I'm not driving right up here to the corner because you look at my concealment circle, anything that that just blunders right around that corner could come into me. I've I've actually got to travel, you know, this way a little bit so I can I can actually see around this before I can actually turn back in, and that's that's important that that people make that distinction as soon as that musashi pops up you see i i just turn away i just want to see what this guy's doing i don't want to you know he knows that there's a destroyer on this on this angle because when he was spotted but i also know he don't stop on a dime he's got a he's got to turn an angle into you know four battleships maybe even five battleships all shooting at him and this this opens up the opportunity for me to uh, make a, a decent torpedo play. And what I'm looking to do is right at, at this angle, I'm I'm closing the distance. I want to have less time for these torpedoes to to be in the water. And I'm just leading him. I know he's going to be backing up because he can't take the tank this firepower. It's not happening. So I throw one set of torps out there. And I'm just looking for the, the flood. And then I'm just going to follow it up with another set of torps. And what I'm looking to do is uh, get an unrepairable flood there. So it's, it's kind of a cheeky move. But when you're close in like that, you don't necessarily need to, you know, go for the, the alpha strike. Got the flood, got his engine, and you can. I, I like the new visuals with the floodings because you can actually tell that a target's flooding without relying on his, uh, without relying on the damage counter. So, 
I'm just gonna smoke up and uh, I'm just gonna go to town on this lion. My torps miss, but I, I notice he's still ticking. Uh, which, by the way, speaking of, of this build, yes, I am running the, uh, the uh, longer smoke duration uh, module that you buy for, for coal. It basically adds nine seconds longer of, uh, of puff time to your, your smokes. And what I'm finding is I can actually like bunny hop in the smoke you know, two or three times, re reacquire targets that uh, have stopped shooting at me, and, uh, you know, engage them, bait another shot, and then, you know, it, slow back down and, and kind of use this as almost like a, a shorter height of type smoke. And I'm finding there's there's some plays with this. I'm not, not quite r there yet for me to throw it on my gearing. But, uh, you know, it, it is something that I'm toying with right now. I just figured that I'd mention it. Um, Musashi's still flooding. Just going to start shooting him. I, I want to make sure that he goes down, doesn't get a, a repair off. Um, so, just going to go to town on him. There we go. Pick the kill up there. And then again, just start working on this lion again. And I mean, just just that fast, we're up to 94k, and it's it's these patience with torpedo boats. Your your damage, all you really need to have a good game is one decent torpedo volley. So investing that time to not blow your stock. You know, if I'd have, if I'd have came right up on this corner, uh, just like how this Massachusetts is doing, that guy poking around that island, I'm probably only going to land a couple torpedoes at all because he's immediately going to angle at me. So, you know, it, it's something to something just to consider when you're playing, uh, especially when you're playing torpedo boats or you know, even hybrids like the U.S. lines, um, you know, there's, you know, take, take some time and, and do it upright. Um, at this point, I've basically, you know, everything's outrun my, my gun range. Uh, if you noticed, I basically got a, a fire on the lion, then switched to the Ganiza now to help finish him off. And, uh, you know, the, this whole, you know, effort here is just creating pressure on this, this flank. And this flank started crumbling. The enemy team's, you know, pretty much in a rout. And this is one of the effects that destroyers can have on, uh, on a flank. Uh, they went from, you know, pushing this to, to crumbling in just a matter of minutes. At this point, you know, I know this game's over. I'm starting to be a little more aggressive actually shooting outside of smoke. Um, but again, Fletcher, you've got really good maneuverability. Use it. I mean, you know, 9, 10 kilometers away, you're still a pretty difficult target for a lot of ships to hit. I am getting a little close into this guy though at this point, but uh, my smoke's coming up, so. Battery critical. Why, thank you. Uh, basically, just slowed up, and uh, this guy ended up shooting in front of me. Got the extra fire on him, and uh, just gonna keep chugging away. At this point, I know he's going down. I get a second unrepairable fire. That's the kill. Now, now at this point, the cap is wide open, so I'm just gonna drive right in there to cap. I've, I've, you know, helped eliminate any opposition. You know, capping this doesn't isn't gonna factor me any any HP or anything like that. Um, and it's, 
you know, that's that's something that I, I see too many DDs get hung up on this whole I'm gonna I'm gonna contest cap all game and just sit there and hug an island where they're they're gonna, you know, potentially be torped or you know, if there'd have been a DD behind that island, you know, when all of all that enemy team pushed up, they'd have gotten nuked by, you know, the they never would have saw the, the Flint pushing into Cap. The Atlanta was there, the Neptune was there, and then all the battleships shooting. It, it just would have been a cluster. Um, so, trying to, to break the, uh, the stereotype of um, how destroyers are supposed to play. At no point were we, you know, in danger of losing that game. Because I wasn't in that cap. Now, if we needed to stop points or something like that, I would have to move my position uh, off that uh, off that corner and contest a cap to try to stop points or, or cap it so we can get some points going. But it's not necessarily that you you always have to have you know every single cap flipped and in a lot of ways it hurts you uh stats wise as a player if you concentrate your your main effort as a destroyer player is constantly capping making sure every cap is your team's because the game will go by so quickly you don't have time to launch but you know maybe four or five maybe six torpedo spreads and you know, if that game went on for another two minutes, it's usually the the last stage of the game where your damage really starts to open up. You've killed the the destroyer screen, the you know radar screen is in disarray or dead, and it's that later stage you can get in there. And when battleships are trying to angle against other battleships, you can just pick them apart with torpedoes and just clean up. And it's that easy sort of damage that, that destroyer players need to need to realize they need to survive that long in, in order to be able to take advantage of that situation. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. Uh, you know, I know people were looking for Fletcher games right, left, and center. Uh, so wanted to do a quick one here. Uh, again, you can see, you know, I didn't need the second set of torps to do the, the flood, but, uh, you know, you, you set these, these plays up in mind uh, to maximize your, your dot damage with destroyers, and you can rack up an insane amount of damage uh, in a hurry. So, I hope you guys are having a good night. hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys were wondering, yeah, I forgot to take uh, reload off... Uh, off the Fletcher, I was, you know, potentially dabbling with running Fletcher a few games and, and ranked, and the ship was just, it's it was so not in meta that it just wasn't worth the time, um, which is why it's gun spec and, and not the usual Torpedo Tubes Mod 3. Um, but that's that's basically the only difference in, uh, in this game. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the game. Hope you guys are having a good night. I'll talk to you later.